114 fresh new Pokemon. Every single Arceus given Paldean specimen, the whole lot of them can get it. Whether you reckon the designs are good or bad, you can't deny that they really whacked out the jumbo set of Crayolas for this generation. Insanely creative Pokedex they've conjured up here. A stalk bomber, skeletal dogs, graffiti monkeys, tumbleweeds, that consume you, a jolly little character, and his ball of mud. I've gone through all of them for Scarlet and Violet, starters, regionals, convergence, paradoxes. I've all done those in past videos. They're still here, but if you reckoned I was a bit brief on them and you're fuming that I only mentioned the iconic brute bonnet for an entire seven seconds, go watch my other videos and then get mad. Wait, no, hold on. Like and subscribe first and do the notification bell thing and all that. Is that the line? Yeah, is that what you gotta say in every video? Then get mad. This be the big daddy of the Paldea ranked videos. All there is left to do is rank all currently known Paldean Pokemon. Every region has its bulk of Gothetas, the Galarian Mimes, a near unanimous decision lost Pokemon that gets no ratings, at least outside of people with an ankle bracelet that sets off when they go near a park. In Paldea, I just don't know what that is. There aren't that many that I'm offended to look at, so these lower tiers are a bit difficult to shift through. It's been six months now, and I'm not budging. But Quaxwell isn't just the worst starter form, top contender for worst mon roaming the streets of Paldea. I don't even know what else I can say to further bury this bitter chow mein protein. The guy looks like he was laughing at Squidward for playing with a reef blower and his head just never set back in place. Like Sonic is mid spin dash on that dome. As if Quaxwell was a standard duck but you've managed to freeze frame a photo of him milliseconds before perishing to a homing attack. The blue blur turning Quaxwell into a dusty red blur. Scientists toil for years in government hidden laboratories with huge black cauldrons and wooden spoons to create toxins with the sole purpose of eliminating creatures like your mom. Nah, but Shrudel, the tongue being a paintbrush does get some creativity points from me, but it still just looks like such a vile specimen. Poisonous vandalism just by walking about, getting itself straight on the muck list. You know, the list where you're legally obligated to obliterate on site. Only thing saving this race from getting chucked into the toxic gulag is evolving into Grafeye. Much easier to contain. The amount of unnecessary cleaning the people of Paldea must have to go through, because one of these decided to have an evening stroll across the town. They'd be grafting every day like they're on parole down Isle Delfino. I can't tell where I want to go with Squawkabilly. On one hand, the state of that trim is telling me he was battering 10 year olds in an Asda car park at 7am trying to get a hold of that limited edition Olajide Olatunji Prime bottle. On the other hand, it looks like he's about to kill his career down the laugh factory. He's about to terrorize Jerry Seinfeld's fridge. Thing looks like Kramer. As long as his parrot hasn't been picking up his vocabulary of Kramer, yeah, he's in the clear. He's either like if Chatsot had a Gen Z son who he supports but doesn't quite understand. Or if Chatsot got hit and run like Brian Griffin got tattooed on someone and then the family got Squawkabilly to replace him for like two episodes. Capsa Kids evolved from Scoville and I can get behind a bit. The fully grown spicy peppers, but the red hot Casper Kids, it just doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Something about this design is so punchable. If I saw this thing scuttling across a field, a primal urge would take the helm. I would not hesitate for a second to Batista bomb him through a table. Many Pokemon, I mean most creatures even, I would feel so much remorse for toe punting. Caps for Kid is not making the draft there. I'd feel as much emotion taking a bite into a ham only sandwich than I would finesse shotting this little demon. I'd treat Caps for Kid like McGregor would treat Hass Buller. He'd be getting that crossbar challenge. One of the worst in the entire roster and the worst paradox form going. But you already know that because you watch me. Everybody knows that because everybody watches me. You're all in my walls. Mmm. Brute boy. Fairly dead paradox Pokemon. Above average, tinny holder. Flittle just hurts to look at. All the way from its little gown to them little mascaraed up eyelashes to that little mouth. Looking like the tip of a little urethra. Like seeing a dog in makeup. It's just not natural. It's just not what God permitted you to do. If any one of you steals its beloved berries, it'll chase you down.
and exact his revenge. You've all been warned, but I'll be having Belly Bolt demolishing all of them berries. They can all get it from Cherry to Moranga. Because what's it gonna do when Belly Bolt has them bounce off the floor by folding its head in like one of them rubber jumping poppers? We've now had more than enough time to slowly and painfully digest that little, that little jaggy, low poly design Iron Jugulus decides to hobble about with in the air. How is my man gonna be in the air and hobble? Easily the worst Violet Paradox form. Futuristic Hydreigon sounding like something you'd have to be strapped into if you weren't born with a neck. Oh, no neck have you? Into the Iron Jugulus you go then. Right down there with Brute Boy holding Bev's for Great Tusk. I guess he'd be there to serve as a very logistically inefficient bottle opener. Maybe he opened opens up his clamps, he's got a pair of speakers in there for the afters. Hey, right, Jugulus, what are you calling this? Hey, where's the drum bass? When you had these concept sketches in game building up to the reveal of two legendary paradox forms, I can't believe the whole lot of us got clickbaited by an ancient textbook. Gassed us all up to think some mad fusion between the three Yanova legends was gonna happen. And what do we end up with here, right? What was this? Verizion to Iron Leaves. Barely a form change. Paradox? That's not even an abnormality. It's not even Ainsley, mate. This is just what your crystal collecting aunt thinks was gonna happen to you after taking the jab. Verizion taking that Verizon connection a bit too literal. Been hanging about their 5G towers. I told you those death traps were set up by the elites to roboticize our legendary Pokemon. So when the China region comes a knocking, we've got no strong Pokemon left to defend the West. I am completely indifferent on Nimble. It's not great. I can't really say it's that terrible either. You're just there hopping about making me think random encounters have made a comeback. You know, since you're barely visible on the map. Very much a ham only sandwich mon for me. I feel as much emotion looking at Nimble as I would choke slamming Casper Kid onto the thumbtacks. Staring blankly at Nimble like a pigeon. Cause I've had more emotionally driven moments taking paracetamol. The trio of Taurus, my least favorite regional or convergent forms. All 13 of those forms are decent. This is just the lesser of the 13. Because I wouldn't mind if it were just the one Tauros in this style as a singular entity. It's a solid choice in design. And when you're in the same weight class as like Annihilate and Clodsire, you're getting sparked out there in the rankings. <laughs> When the chunk got revealed, aside from the name being a bit of a bit of a goof and a gaff, all right, get your hooting and hollering out of the way. Bit of a laugh at the Pokemon, but the gimmick's worn off now. So what's the crack here? Why is it so highly rated? I don't get it personally, but I have to say this little animation they made, it swayed me quite a bit. So I think it's a lot more solid when it's showing off some personality. But just playing through the games, outside of this quirky short animation, the chunk should only exist to make me chunk. Its purpose is to fill sandwiches and be sacrificed to summon the full English. Lechonk, I've created you to be sent down to Earth to fuel Mr. Sawaro's sexy biceps. And that oinkalone pair it evolves into, they aren't any better, so they can all get it. The whole lot of them. They could get the bun, the sauce, the scran, the am nam nam. Mass shift is okay enough. I just feel as though for the pre-evolved form of the boss, my boss diff, it should have been, you know, it should have been a bit more goony. You know what I mean? More of a goomba, a henchman, a brute boy to the mob boss. And less so just, just one of his kids that he brought into work for the day. Why is he not going to be one of them Joe Rogan? Oh no, it's the bear looking blockheads. I want it all. I want all the henchmen. How is Meowth more of a mobster than the mob boss himself in his younger days? This ain't no Johnny tight gels. Massive lips are looking way too loose to be dealing with the inner circles of the boss. <laughs> Fido and Dashbon. Now, fair play to them. They are top shelf bread Pokemon, but fairly average dog Pokemon. Plain Pocketman, plain Scran. Get yourself a pet that'll start growing mold on it after four days. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit there, as if the pair of them would even last that long down Paldea. They've got that Majora's Mask time limit. Three days maximum before they're getting harvested to fuel the Titan sandwich industry of Paldea. Though I've got to say, if you fused Fido with Wug Trio, hey, you'd get a stacked foot long. I kind of respect that this is what they went for as a dog-based food Pokemon. They had sausage 
Witch Dog there as the obvious play. I guess you've already got three there with Wug Trio. You don't want a gimmick in Fringe. This region ain't big enough for the four of us. So they went, nah, nah, the big brain play. Pure breads. Like a dog, get it? But with more carbohydrates. Screamtail was interesting enough when you first laid eyes on it. Low tier paradox though. But this just makes me think Jigglypuff must have been an elite specimen in the eyes of evolution. A billion years. All it had to do to survive is deflate itself, let a solid two feet worth of air out and change its singing styles. The screaming was getting to be a bit much. You're keeping the whole cul-de-sac awake. Did a full 180 because now it's singing puts everyone to sleep. Got a lot of time to make up for those billion years worth of no lions. Frigibax, you don't look real. Have any of you ever seen Frigibax? Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and is Frigibax in the room with us right now? Think about it from this perspective. Frigibax is your baby pseudo legend. This is Paldea's Tratini. It's Lavatar. It's Beldum. It's Gibble. It's it's Gumi, and Dreepy. You know what? I'd like to officially resign from this point. Welcome to the team, you chubby fridge. What am I on about? We've got a dumbbell. We've got whatever Garchomp's Pac-Man looking offspring supposed to be and goo. But now we have the power supply to the Prodis Arctic AR 550 watts white lid chest freezer 550 liters is where I'm going to draw the line. I don't think so. <laughs> The Mousehold Evolution line. I don't care too much for it, but it's at least memorable because they're joint. Easily could have been a somehow more forgettable Plusle and Minim without that design choice. I'm all for the rare forms specific Pokemon have, like the three belly Dunsparce, but a slightly smaller Happy Family isn't really worth them low odds. I want to see a complete anomaly. Where's the Mouseholds where the pair of them have to raise a big old Rattigan? Around one in every 100 Mouseholds must host the Rattigan, the big hairy Ratman. Surely as well, the pound for pound most awkward Pokemon to reproduce, especially for those Ratman families. All around fun for the whole family. You got them handcuffed to you and everything. The two parents have to go and find other like-minded mouse holds and tell the kids to look away and try not to smell anything for the next seven minutes. <laughs> the hellish fate of a poor soul being trapped in the cyborg Hariyama body. Would you ever want to be kept alive like this? People are going to be writing their wills out like, If I'm ever mortally wounded, I do not consent to the Hariyama treatment. Now the Diglett treatment, however... <laughs> Sandy shocks. It's all right. Pre-evolved paradox forms, I understand, but I did wonder at first why they put this kind of stock into a middle evolution. It can't just be more Kanto favoritism. So why not go for the Magnazone? But your man there might as well already be a future paradox form. That UFO is far too ahead of its time buzzing around the present day, let alone it somehow having some rusty ancient form also stuck to the ground, rolling about on caterpillar treads like Wally. -E. It makes sense to devolve the original final evolution instead into what scientists could only refer to as magnetons. <laughs> The Dunsparce. After all these years, all these prophecies that you would one day spawn. Because I figured it had the same spawn rate as your man Jesus. Finally, you have Dunsparce Prime. And it's just a Dunsparce with more bellies to feed. A Dunsparce who triples the Uber Eats order. It's going to have to be in the nosebleeds of the entire Paldea Pokedex, sadly. But that shouldn't be taken in the wrong way. All this means is that it served its exact purpose. They did a spot-on job of making the most on-brand evolution being somehow even more underwhelming than the big man himself. <laughs> On paper, Cloth seems all for me. A stupid looking crab robot you'd fight in Mario Galaxy. And it probably would have been fine. But we already have so many elite crab men that Cloth looks, you know, he just looks like a bit of a weirdo in comparison, Dunny. The crustacean King Crabrawler, Crawdon, Kingler, Clawwitzer, Alpha Mons. Even Krabby is packing more of a pinch on him. But Cloth, especially Titan Cloth, it just looks like another one of them giant mechas Team Rocket would have commissioned up for the episode so they could try and steal all of the good crab Pokemon. It looks like a fake boss fight you'd have at Pokestar Studios. 
Unfortunately, Pal Day is three hot dog maximum rule. Can he have four? That's a bit too greedy now. Unfortunately, that had to be reserved all for greedy, greedy Wug Trio, one of my lesser rated convergent mons. It could have banged. Could have gone from the 30p Little's own canned sausages and water to the full Frankfurter. But I wish they strayed more away from the Doug Trio formula and made something new with Wiggler as the blueprint. But I can still appreciate it enough for what it is. You know, it's just what happens to a distant cousin of Doug Trio when it adapts to survive on the beach. Hogan's Beat Shop, dude, with that red hot leathery skin, brother. Every region's Pokedex wouldn't be complete without a native evolution line of 6 out of 10 grass types. Although I'm kind of underselling this evolution line because I'd put this slot in like the B minus bracket because the designs, they do be looking clean. An olive evolution line should be straight on Mr. Sawaro's team for cooking classes. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, what am I thinking? He'd be overpowered. He'd be unstoppable. Those big greasy biceps combined with all of that oil. <laughs> Veluza is a more interesting take on regional fish. Up until I found out its actual typing, I thought if you crawled into its mouth, you'd find a Jinjo. Probably wishing you'd crawl straight into his mouth. Oh, he's praying for the day you do that. Just how hungry does Veluza have to be to resort to using its psychic powers to jettison its flesh off just so it's that much quicker to get a bite to eat? You know, I say that, but if it were possible, an embarrassing amount of people would do the exact same thing if it meant they could Q-jump a Mac Jettison Flesh. Sounds like the name of a Fallout character who's the mob boss to the Ghoul Mafia. Hey, Smooth Skin, you wanna know why they call me Jettison Flesh? Eh, nobody ever wants to see the flesh thing. I'll rate the ball a string gimmick here, but at first, Tarantula wasn't swaying me too much. At least not until I looked into the Tarantula. String so elastic, it's natural enemy Scyther. It'll do nothing. He can't do anything to it. So their existence is purely to taunt that entire species because it can't cut the strings. Like your man Flats giving it big down the boat in school that he's going to fill in SpongeBob after school and then he no diffs him. Like giving a dog a plastic bottle sealed up with treats shaking around inside it. I don't know where Scissor comes into play here. The guy's name is Scissor and it gets even less equipped to handle their natural enemy. I guess at that point, you know, you move on, all right? The beef's kind of over. We've all grown up a bit. We've gone up a few levels. We've had a few trades, you know, we've changed, okay? So you shift on to a new natural enemy to match the new hardware. Grows the clamps like, all right, you know what? You know, what? we'll call it a draw. Yeah, we'll call it a draw. We both get a point and I'll just go off and beef with some Voltorbs instead. You know, see if I can give them the old hydraulic press. <laughs> I first thought Scovillain was equal to, if not somehow, more punchable than its pre-evolved form. All I saw was a caps for kid with a body that's far easier to set up for the Batista bomb, but a giant fuming bell pepper full of nutrition and personality. Like the devil and angel on your shoulder are the angry peppers. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah. This is another one of one of the more awkward creatures to reproduce and all that if the two heads have their own individual sentience. The red hot polyamorous peppers. Now, Shrudel is a pest, a vandal, leaving poison in the form of Crayola drawings across the nation. But Graffae is much more refined. It's like an abstract smeagle. Their graffiti, while still poisonous, is for the culture. Bit of a one-hit wonder though, aren't they? You know, each one has its own unique pattern and it will paint that same one till the day it dies. He's that one kid who only knows how to draw the S. They just go about marking their territory, covering up other graffiti tags like the Crips and Bloods, except it's just every single existing graffiti feuding with each other. You know what I'm saying? Crips and Blood free-for-all mode. <laughs> Great Tusk's potential fate billions of years on, only to become Iron Treads. Going from the authority of any land it roams, to getting written up by the future feds for leaving skid marks on the road. Tusk would make you king of the land. Treads might land you three points on your trainer's license if it goes by a speed camera. <laughs> Low kicks I'm a fan of because I really think more bug Pokemon need to go back to their beedrill roots and be complete menaces to society. The name hinting at being a pun of low kicks, which I think is spot on Donnie because that's exactly what he'd mug you for quite easily too. The guy's armed with a pair of body sized switchblades 
with a government issued no symbol on them. Like the regional birds, the weak bugs, at this point another addition to Pikachu's long distant cousins is about as guaranteed per region as the legendary you see on the front cover. But the Pormi line, they're definitely higher up on the family table around Christmas. They're the disciples that managed to get a bit of a closer seat to Jesus during the Last Supper. For once, they're getting a decent evolution line. A good pair of biceps on them. I mean, no, no Mr. Sawaro now, but I mean... <laughs> Who is? <laughs> and they're not just there to sell plushies to mums who think, well, well, they're all just Pikachus anyway. A rare useful take on the region's Pikachunian relatives. Sounds like one of them Dorkly jokes from 10 years ago. But it was inevitable that we'd end up with a car Pokemon one eventually. And believe it or not, people who haven't mentally progressed since the early 2010s, they pulled it off decently enough. Varum and Reverum, that might sound stupid, but a poisonous engine Pokemon, that's a pretty solid gimmick. Reverum is interesting especially since it's proof that you can just modify Pokemon. Obviously on a grand scale, you could always do that, like Team Plasma funds go going straight into Genesect or dressing your Pikachu up like Rey Mysterio. But I'm talking about just how easy it might be. Because Team Star, these are just high school kids modding their cars a bit. I think I've said something like this before, but there'd have to be laws about that kind of thing. You could make some real dangerous Pokemon giving them add-ons. Stick on a comically large nail to Tinkerton's hammer, giving Pangoro a crater Stella and a pool cue, giving the walking kitchen knife drawer King Gambit a gun. Bombardier is such a creative one to go for. You have a stork bomber plane, so obviously this whole time I'm thinking it's a bit of a dragapult kind of gimmick, a military weapon. But nah, nah, the bird just wants to have a bit of the crack. He's just having a little giggle to himself. It gathers trinkets and goodies up into its chest feathers and drops those things from high places for fun. Just enjoys dropping things that make loud noises. Full on man ape-like brain easily very stimulated someone get this bird a compilation of guys smashing huge pieces of ice right now Bax Calibur is a sound enough late dex pokemon but i'm almost convinced terrestrializing exists purely for your man there just to shut off that freezer living in its belly of back flaps i think the axe is the cold source and make it actually able to utilize that thermal exchange ability and make it resist fire types moves properly. I just don't rate that this is the one out of all of this Pokedex that gets to be the pseudo legend. The thought never even crossed my mind because the guy feels like a Haxorus or Drudagon kind of pocket man. You get one, maybe two if we're lucky again with the pseudo legend status and they handed it off to the dragon that took so much inspiration from Godzilla that it has to look basic enough to be wearable by a stuntman. Has to be onesie proportioned and ready to smash up Lego Tokyo. Yeah, no, it's interesting. It's in, but, but you know, it can't look too interesting now, can it? It has to be physically realistic enough for one of our stuntmen to wear its skin and fight the Power Rangers. Playing through, Glimora was who I thought was the pseudo legend. Glimmer's fairly late game. It's got a bit of a quirky type combination on them. The champion keeps one strapped in there. And they mostly reside in a crater that the average Paldean citizen can't mention out loud without being put in a giant sack and thrown in the back of a jeep by two my champs in black suits. I love when Pokemon throws us big monsters. The meat and spuds of the Pokemon realm. But arguably just as important, Pokemon thrives off its weirdos. You need the creative ones that take a good minute or two for your brain to digest what the eyes are feeding it. And the Glim pair are a very sound duo of weirdo Pokemon. Completely different spectrum of chemicals being released into your brain the first time seeing Glamora compared to your first encounter with Pidove. <laughs> The boss Pokemon. The Mafia Don. Hey, my boss, Steve. Oh, what have I done to deserve this flat, flavorless, herba mystica sandwich? Ironically enough, coming in at a weight much less than actual Mastiffs. Gotta be careful when this dog comes and licks you. It either means, hey, he likes you, or he's giving you the kiss of death. <laughs> Life on the streets is rough, but it could always be worse. Your ops 
could be spied ops. There's a lot of potential personality going on for this design. He seems like, like a real hustler. That pairing of him and Lokix doing collab muggins, that seems all too real. I could fully see him as boss man down the chicken shop after the sesh. The reliable light at the end of the high street that stays open till like 5am knowing the boys are coming for a greasy scran. Top guy, make sure there's still proper chicken cooked and you're not left with having to order or like the veggie wraps as it says on the tin is iron moth no nonsense straight to business i can confidently say that is indeed an iron moth not an awful robo pokemon very underwhelming mecha mothra though i say a very underwhelming mecha mothra was iron moth purely because iron thorns was such a banger gimmick but as i've said mecha godzilla you're the sequel you're not living up to anything when we have the original godzilla at home already he sat in the recliner watching the footy there's no mistaking tyranitar that's the kingpin of any land or recliner sofa it lays dormant in you don't just walk the streets and you go is that is that Francis and Ganu? Nah, nah, none of that. You know if you see Francis and Ganu. There's no mistaking Tyranitar. But with Iron Thorns, there's a lot of leeway for mistaking. A big old lava lamp, a lighter, would it a Pez dispenser? Like a Swiss Army knife for mildly specific utilities? Whereas Tyranitar has just the one, just the one utility. I can't really tell you, but I think it involves ending bloodlines. <laughs> You take a look at Flamigo, you see that flawless stance, that intense eye contact, armed with the fighting type. This can only go down one or two ways. Either I'm getting my throat chopped in, or I'm seeing one hell of a show. Witnessing Flamigo in its perfect harmony on Broadway as the synchronized Pokemon. Gather up a well-oiled horde of them, and they'll be looking like the backup dancers to a Quaquavel gig. Flittle is offensive to look at for me, but Espathra is many tiers above its clapped baby form. It's creative as it is oddly terrifying. Go back thousands of years and show the people of Egypt Cleopatra's bird sona and melt their brains. Despite its appearance, it has a vicious temperament. Despite. What are you talking about, despite? Nah, I took one look at them eyes. I thought he seems like a sound fella. He seems like a nice invite to brunch. Definitely not gonna start tweaking out on you because it thinks you're blinking too loudly. Nah, despite. This ostrich is on a DMT trip staring you down like you've just morphed into a giant psychedelic toad. Would it really be a Pokemon region without another hellish ghost Pokemon? Well, I... I didn't cut my ticket to the afterlife. So uh, what are my options here? I guess I could either uh, find another 107 people maybe to link up. We could house share in like the spirit tomb rock. But shared kitchen, shared toilets, 107 people. Like, I think I'd rather let the wind chuck me about the grass a bit until I become a bramblin. They're a nifty pair of little ghost types, I have to say. But these grassy gizmos are terrifying. All smiles and rolling about when someone says a dead joke until it traps you. It absorbs you. Well, look here, Dutch. Looks like we got ourselves a wild, wild Metroid. Ting Lu is going to have to be the treasure of ruin I'd most likely give away down the pawn shop. Being fourth place for me is still an interesting bit of mud. Not quite as refined as Rella's flawlessly sculpted mud ball, but still a respectable craft that can give him that. Because Ting Lu's true form is the fine china resting on its head. That's kind of mad. Because at first glance, I assumed a cereal bowl on its head. I thought it was a massive inconvenience. But here I am finding out that's the entire specimen. And it's managed to earth bend its way into becoming portable. I gotta say, a very humble form to portray yourself as. If I were a cursed piece of ceramic, you'd be seeing me wondering why 2003 Ronnie Coleman is walking about with a plate on his head. Pokemon finally got the Quartz Block update. Throwing in a bit of variety instead of rearranging the same cobblestone creatures for the regional rock type evolution lines. Good to splash up the color palette. You know, all of them golems, the gigaliths, and them, especially them colossals, they were starting to blend together. Cursing all opposition by spraying salt on them. A lethal combo in the double battles, along with the very sharp and shouldn't be ran with when holding King Gambit. Garganical especially is a nice return to 
form for the rock types. Tyranitar and Agron, they, they can't be pulling all the shifts. It's been far too long since we've had a nice, big, meaty mon made a rock. It's early for me to judge the DLC Pokemon, but at face value, these two are mostly equal to me for now. But they both give me a very unsettling feeling in my gut. See, I think Okidoji, it's not the designer's fault. I'm a little off put by it. It's purely a culture issue because your man here looks like the mascot to a pump and dump crypto scam. As a Pokemon, objectively, it's kind of decent looking, but I just can't switch off the natural gut instinct. My Ed and Nelly radar is peeking at the sight of that face. This is the face of something that's made Logan Paul a lot of quarters around the cul-de-sac. Okie Doji is fully the name of a scam coin as well. Doesn't help that you've got Monkey Dory over there looking like a bored ape. Won't be long now until this monkey's minted to the blockchain. Gonna get stolen and recolored into an NFT set. Look guys, don't worry. Don't, I, I know it's down 900%. I know it's been only been out for a month, but trust the process. It's a long-term hold. Don't sell. Just, just huddle. That's what they say. And everything, everything will be Monkey Dory. Yes, yeah, spot on, Logan. Spot, you're a genius, Paul. I can call you Paul, can't I? Yeah, those, those smooth brains, perfect tagliner. They'll eat it right up. Easy bag, easy money. Maybe I'm speaking too early for the DLC again, but the clear winner of the Kitakami Heroes, Fizandipiti? No dodgy end boy scams here, just a sleek flying Pokemon design. The mighty Great Tusk, consumer of tinnies, head of the table a billion years ago. By which I mean the coffee table that is Brute Bonnet. <laughs> Deli Bird's Iron Bundle. That has to be the biggest gap in power for a new form, at least that I can think of. The guy got that two decades later, Gordon Freezer buff. I just know Iron Bundle was the one to do him in. They took one look at this like, right, that's it. That's enough scalding out of you water types. Only Volcanion gets it now. You happy? Yeah? That's it. Here to remind you of the true meaning of Christmas. Too many non-believers are coming down here celebrating the big JC's birthday sesh like Americans on Paddy's Day. But once Iron Bundle comes down that chimney, you'll all be praying that 2022-year-old man is real. I love Wo Shen. Because it looks like something Mordecai and Rigby would accidentally summon by the end of a regular show episode. And you've got to respect it. All the other objects have a bit of an ego on them. Gave themselves a form that's all powerful, stoic, or intimidating looking. Nice and ready to G-check you if you step into their quarter, their ends of the region. These sentient wooden tablets were like, you know what? You know, I don't need to compensate like the rest of you kitchenware. I'm not going to catfish myself on the bitmoji, making myself look giga chatted up. I will bear this cross. I will be the big furry snail, the Paldean tickle monster. As a collective, the clear bronze medal for the starter lineup would have to go to Sprigatito and Co. In a lot of the starter sets, there's often a very blatant bottom set PE evolution line. But with Paldea's selections, it's a lot closer than you'd think. Never underestimate just how much a Quaxwell job can tank that grade average down for whoever's unlucky enough to have it wedged in between them. The third choice for me, but still decently high up in the overall Pokedex, I'd say it's only a close third to Quaxley. A very close third to Quaxley. Because let's say you take a crack at making a tier list like too many of us do. You start out simple and you go for the nine water starters only in their first form. Gen 1 to 4, you can order them however you want, but that lot, undisputed, top 4. The more modern generations are where the disputes can commence. But with nine of them, Quaxley can now be the clear gatekeeper between the four elite water starters and those other four that aren't even in the same weight class. They don't even go in the bum bag, they go in the back pockets, don't even even care if I get them finessed. They're gone, they're gone. Very easy case for Quaxley to be made that it's the best modern water starter. When Quaxley's only real competition had a whole defense movement created in response to his backlash, that's an easy fifth place. With Paldea and Whooper, I don't know if I want to pat him on the head or engulf him. Paldea and Whooper, it looks adorable and delicious. All I want to do is have my Freddo and eat it too. Nine generations it took for us to get some skeleton Pokemon. Over a thousand of these little specimens, there was no way you're telling me I wouldn't be able to comically play a single one of them like a xylophone. I don't want to hear about Cubone, because that's not a skeleton Pokemon, alright? His mum is the skeleton. 
because she's dead. That's as much of a skeleton Pokemon as Spoink is a pogo stick. I'm not having it. Grievan at least maintains a physical looking form, but unwittingly slowly drains the life force of anyone near it. And that must include itself because it evolved all that meat away straight down to the bone. The actual skeleton Houndstone really nails the horror themed dog gimmick. The thing even looks as though it laughs like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Coridon may have been the winged king of his domain. You can have whatever fancy name you want, but that doesn't mean it can escape evolution dictating that one day it's going to become weaker, much more mountable, and possess even larger glamour muscles. The wheel's been long invented now. You can, you can actually turn them on now. These two kings of their respective times, and Cyclozar is caught in the genetic rock bottom, being a Domino's delivery boy. It's like finding out on Ancestry you're a direct relative to Ares, and somehow you've ended up working for Uber Eats. Ignoring its heritage, though, I still like the guy quite a lot. It's a shame it's literally built to serve. Purpose in life is to be mounted, but I rate it for what it is. The common man's legendary. The people's legendary. A lot of first timers to Paldea Pokedex is introduced. The first dolphin, skeletons, mud rolling legends. Farigarath is a decent banger, almost worth the wait of going 26 years or so without any giraffe Pokemon at all. This entire time, we've been thinking Giraffe Rig was gaslighting us about the giraffe thing. Oh, please, a four foot 11 pony who's supposed to represent the largest ruminant on earth. Get real, Jeremy. Meant to be herbivores and all. And I know for a fact that tail exclusively eats children. Quaxwell managed to have one of the biggest comeback stories going. All the way from that to what everyone can only dub as Paldean icon Gazekin. The collection is almost complete. Now we just need some kind of non-binary grass type Gazekin. Maybe us, I don't know. Combusk them which you're really going to have to change the design for. Been asking for years now. Finally, a response. They showed us the coin. A thousand of them as well. See, I'm more of a goblin man myself, but I'll settle for a little gimme ghoul. It's still good, but gimme goblin it would have been where the real money's at, which then evolves into the one Pokemon you can't be button to back out of evolving. The moment you get the last coin, you're assembling the gold Engo and you're going to like it. You're going to be down a bag, but you're going to have a really fun surfer friend in exchange. You know, greedy gold goblin would have been funny, but having them evolve and become a full on surfer. That idea is money. Get some of anyone. The guy's made of gold and still remains humble. He do be just chill like that. I almost don't even care about the coin entity aspect of them. They turn this little gold ghoul into a very rare species of man who has the charisma of a ninja turtle in the year 2023 and somehow isn't insanely cringy. That is a very rare bit of charisma to have. Never left the word cowabunga in 1998 and somehow we can still pull it off. You don't feel embarrassed as long as he's the one saying it. As if there weren't any more of a reason for Crabominables to become extinct, there's zero excuse for anyone to be subjecting Crabrawler to the Ice Stone death sentence when it could get you that Satitan, pulling the dead collective weight of the ice types, and it's nothing but a peanut compared to that 700 kg frame. But then again, you could, you could keep the Ice Stone in the freezer for a bit longer. Now those things, they don't go off for a few months at least. Couldn't blame you for wanting to keep it in the Satoddle form, like a pseudo-convergent form of Whalemur. Who wouldn't want a whalemer that doesn't have to live in the ocean? One you don't have to drop $50 million on some Joe Rogan sized isolation tank just to keep in your house. Sitoro wouldn't come with that high maintenance of needing to go for walks 500 feet under the sea. Far gone are the days of having to mast up and set sail every time your pet whalemer was aching for a game of fetch. What rule and killer what rule? I rate it. No nonsense. You got what rule and big what rule. Elite regional birds right here. If you could even class them as that, wouldn't even be mad if it swooped down and nicked one of the wug trios out of my stacked Fido hot dog. They could have them. They could have more than welcome. It's an honor to be of sustenance to big what rule because they don't feel like a filler option. Like ah, ooh, ah, ah we gotta sort our birds. Because we do it every year. We always do birds. So now there are people going to start asking questions if we just put in, I don't know, a, a snail 
that could tickle you. Kilowatt Rule comes across as more than your standard large regional pigeon Pokemon. It's like they know HM's got the DVD treatment. Wait, no, nah, sorry, sorry, mate. You know, you know, you can just stream all the HM moves now, near enough. No, nah, so you just get like an app. Like, you don't need to be carrying around that swallow just so you can fly about the region. Like, yeah, like if you go on Uber, like if you feel, uh, if you don't feel safe at night, they've got this one down the bottom where you can just hire out him a champ and he carries you home. And you just feel so safe in them arms. Now for the recent gens, it's like they have to give you an incentive to actually want the regional bird. Never again are you gonna see an unpleasant job. Shine, Shin, Shine Pal has beta gold and silver energy in the best way possible. In terms of real animals they haven't made a Pokemon out of up to this point, Snow Leopard was just another ace they must have kept in the chamber. An animal like that writes itself as a Pokemon. One of the stronger treasures of Ruin, but uh, to be fair, I wouldn't be trying to start fights with the big snail. That fella knows the move Tickle. Somehow, if that snail gets one of those off and with that mouth, one violent sneeze and Shine Pal's finished. But once again, the hardware is what's running the whole operation here. Not exactly the sharpest sword on the grindstone, is it? Positioning itself as incisors of the body. This guy just runs into Ledge like, Oh, what? what? Blades for hands? Oh, nah, that, that's way better. Oh, what? Oh. Octobax is a top shelf middle stage Pokemon. It just looks so clean. It has that simplistic early gen vibe to its design. Just needs a splash of watercolor and it looks straight out of the Space World 97 demo in the best way possible. If only it kept its superior dinosaur stance into the final evolution instead of having to be fully vertical. The final stage before it had to become a walking practical effect. I've already gone off on this wacky gadget of a creature so much, as well as how terrifying the much larger and much crueler brother is in the Convergent of Parallel Forms video. So instead, uh... How about a little bit of trivia about them? The game's coding suggests that these two might have been what replaced the Convergent Magikarp and Gyarados. In Magikarp and Gyarados, they get a good amount of time in the limelight, so they definitely made the right choice here. Because look how zesty the shroom is. This is what they wanted to take from you. The main man himself, White Diglett. You bloody legend, get over here. Um, White Diglett, it's clearly a water Diglett of sorts. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the assumption you made looking at this. You see that name, that design, that's our White Diglett boy. But go and just by design, you know what it is. Water is accurate too, sure, but the streets know. Whoever drew these concept sketches in game, they really done Violet dirty. Set them up for nothing. Then they go and make it out like Entei was contributing the dominant genes for Paradox Suicune. But as much as I still want to see how this fusion would turn out, I can't complain at all with Walking Wake. I'm not disappointed we ended up with Smooth Brain Suicune, lumbering about, showing off its wonky hexagon. Slither Wing, as a top shelf paradox form, is of course gonna slither its way into the top bracket of this list. Really is something special. The perfect blend of being so terrifying, yet so huggable. Dear, do you think it's worth the potential close combat being laid into you if, you know, you, you just tried to get close enough to stroke its fur? Do you think it's worth getting your hairline blitzed back five inches? In this reporter's opinion, the answer is sadly, Yes. I reckon it's fair to say Iron Valley, a universal banger in law, in design, in a dust up outside a dodgy casino at 4 a.m. Less so a dust up for Valiant, though. It might be from your perspective a throw in hands job. For Valiant, it's more of an Agent 47 job. You can't tell me otherwise, especially when that shiny form is looking so cold. All the future Paradox shinies are steel looking, but it specifically makes Valiant look like a proper killer. The true Alpha Bishop. I think near enough every Pokemon can learn the move Headbutt, but I think that needs to be disallowed a bit because something telling me a Headbutt of King Gambit, that's going to be doing a bit more to your man there than 70 damage. Your HP bar is not going to go down to red and start beeping. It's going to go to nothing and start flatlining. Should have the attack power more along the lines of, you know, like Guillotine, Fisher. A double kick off steel toe capped Hitmonlee. Could fully see why they've mostly had to shift from things like friendship evolution mechanics. Increasing your friendship points with Bishop to get that King Gambit sounds like a lost cause. Taking him downtown for some back rubs. That masseuse is leaving that interaction with less fingers than Mewtwo. 
a Wandolias, a big greasy ogre Pokemon was on the horizon. Maybe not as lumbering or even as greased up as I was expecting. The guy looks pretty clean, much less Shrek-like and baby consuming than my hacky was informing me, but it still happened. That's gotta be worth something. For what little we know, Ogre Pond is shaping up to be a banger, but I gotta say, you cut it very close with that name though. There's a slim margin for error there. Almost had my internet history looking that much more spicy for the government spies OBS in my screen constantly. And then this next new legendary also revealed almost definitely the source of terrestrializing and the only thing that artist could actually sketch obviously it's looking like it is to terra crystals and all that what eternatus is to gigantamax polluting the nation of gala with trt and all the growth hormones you could imagine if joe rogan takes even one step into gala he's gonna have the head to body ratio of a funko pop very little's known for now even the type isn't there yet but it's got the whole lineup on his back could be any one of these comes pre-built with any type you want just slap its back like an 18 piece Simon says. All I do know is me likey the design, me likey big turtles. Therefore, me brain likey. And mid making this video, they come out with this a rare babyish looking Pokemon that I'm actually gonna give some ratings towards. If they're going down the route of the big legend being the big god turtle that humanity lives on, you think they just come pre packaged, god sized? fully trained up, already in the Bronze Age, on their way to a domination victory. That's not how it works. You've got a graft. You've got to teach your future bit of landmass to not piss on the floor inside. You've got to teach them to stop trying to drop game on your Lilo and Stitch plushie every night. You know, the, the basics. Pokemon is all fun and games. It's all cute little turtles and rodents mud slapping and bubble beaming each other down the park. But the shark a deadline fully strapped up. They're that guy who's learned one good chokehold and they're just dying for a reason to whack it out in public. Except here, Armor Rouge is just dying to use his cannon. Like, if you lot got any 16th century wars you want to kick off, you know where to find me. All right, you got my number, just hit me up. Like, brother, it's Route 5. Crade isn't showing up. Tuck your shoulders in, you look ridiculous. I never thought I'd live to see the day I'd witness a Pokemon you'd need to activate Black Lost Ritual to even get a hold of. Even Charcadet doesn't feel like a forced Hasbulla baby Pokemon. You could have kept these two as reserves for the front cover legendary Pokemon. You know, in case any contractual disputes happened between the Rhydon pair and they have to work out a deal with Digimon instead. <laughs> The biggest menace walking the mean streets of Paldea. Easily annihilate. The guy looks like his name is banned from being said out loud on school grounds. And at least that name sounds threatening enough to fit the bill. With how they're naming some Pokemon these days, you're lucky it didn't get called something like Chimpangree. It is well outside the depths of my knowledge to know what you'd need to gather in order for this thing to perish. All I know is that there's probably seven of them and they're scattered across the planet. What do you even go for first? Like Dragon Balls? Chaos Emeralds? Horcruxes? I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Like, do, do you gather those and just chuck them into the designated Minecraft lava pit? Is that how Voldemort got folded? Because as a kid, I got bored on the fourth Harry Potter. Our Horcrux is not like little goblin characters, like Jinjos that you collect around the Hogwarts. <laughs> As we all know, it's inevitable that every Pokemon will be tattooed on someone eventually. Now, which one of yous? Come on, step up. Who's breaking the ice and getting inked up with Rella? The jolly little fella. See him down the local after a long, hard day's graft of rolling his iconic ball of mud about. A respectable size acquired from his many years gathering scrap playing Council House Katamari. And maybe slightly less than the jolly little fella, but its evolved form gets decent ratings from me and all. They didn't crabominable Rabska. They just made him preggers. It was that child support money. He's got another little fella tucked away sleeping inside the mud ball now. And that is why you're going to see a lot of Rellas staying well away from evolution. Doesn't want to be babysitting a beach ball for the rest of his life. Nah, 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 Rella wants to be down the pub making profits on the fruities. Can't be down the spoons at 10 a.m. with that kind of responsibility. Yeah, mate, yeah, nah, mate, mate, Rella. Come down the pub. Nah, nah, I can't, mate, can't, mate. Uh, I got the child orb tonight. Yeah, the child orb's in need of a good roll around. Forever.
One correction to my Parallax form video, if I had to make one. I reckon Fluttermane is only just edging its way past Roaring Moon. But either way, too close to call for different aesthetic reasons. I rate him as highly as each other. The ancient past is where it's at for the pocket monsters. Scarlet was eating good, proper monsters back in day a billion years ago. Whereas the billion year future has the treatment and surgery you would need if you started a fight with one of them. After a dodgy run in with these two, I doubt there'd be enough left of you for the Hariyama treatment. With what we can manage to scrape off the floor, we're gonna have to settle for mending you together like a... How does a scrambled execute sound? Chiyu, Shiyu, Shayu, a mythical goldfish that has a real secret legendary aura surrounding it. It just looks like you found something special or incredibly cursed. This far surpasses anything Mordecai and Rigby could botch. Chiyu feels like once you've cracked into his safe, the entire planet gets hit with a destiny bond, swims through the sea of lava it surrounds itself with. You know, Shiyu's just a diglet, isn't it? A magma diglet. A Macargo who didn't gas up his skill set for the job application. Who chases and hugs Corviknight all the time and wields a giant hammer? Why, it's Tinker Turd, of course. What an evolution line right here. A whole family of scrap metal hoarders. Straight out the egg and Tinker Tink's already getting groomed for the high-vis jacket. Grafted in with a hammer from day one. Got a forklift certification before saying a first words. You take one look at that lad and you're like, Yeah, you've worked a hard day's graft. Get this toddler a tinny. And Tinker Tough hunting down the bishop species, loading them up into the back of a van, selling them for scrap, cash in hand, and Tinkerton single-handedly destroying the Corviknight taxi industry, aiming at them like it's a carnival dunk tank game, and instead of comically dropping you into a tub, it drops your Uber into the middle of the ocean. Still fine in the other regions, just not on Tinkerton's territory. Imagine you're going to visit, like, the island region, and you're warned, I no cabs, no, no cabs, we got a real big goblin problem over here, we have these wee green characters, and they see they come out from the bushes, right? They come out, they bash all the cars in with the, or the wee hurling sticks. Tinkerton definitely should have taken the pseudo-legendary mantle of Paldea. That's by design that it couldn't be held responsible with that kind of power. It's already swinging that hammer around like it's lightweight, like it doesn't weigh more than a double help in a blissy. Imagine 600 base stat, the best overall dual typing. Just had to one-up Corviknight again by being the slightly more resistant type combo. And a large hammer, armed and ready to do in ET once he shows his face on earth again to Coriden and Moriden, the cause and solution to you and your friends perishing in cold blood. A rather delightful pair of legends here. Actual bonding experience with them. Personality can make the Pokemon. And they just did what they do to every companion creature in movies and shows. They just made it a big dog. The times have changed. You weren't ever going to see Groudon and Kyogre getting the toothless treatment. And it seems like most of us had a difficult time choosing what games to go for. Because I don't think anyone is disputing that these two certified bangers. A skeleton Pokemon, I can kind of understand a little bit why it'd take them a good few generations to sort that concept out. But a dolphin? How has it been 27 years and the Pokemon world's only just revealed that dolphins exist? Dolphins already have brains as high res as humans. Imagine how intellectually tanked up they'd probably be in the Pokemon world. They'd be shoving Alakazams into lockers with their frontal lobe. Wouldn't even have to open the door. They'd just brute force them in through solid matter. And luckily, they're not menaces lathering Alakazam spoons with super glue. They just like to have a bit of a swim about up until it evolves into to Palafin, and here's its brethren, creatures of the deep, calling for aid, achieving this big buff Dwayne the Rock Johnson up hero form, the opposite of the bully. Palafin is the retriever of those shoved into lockers. No one should even know that this is Palafin. Its transformation will never be shown to anyone. Senses danger and finds the nearest phone box to just put on a hundred pounds of muscle and rearrange its whole anatomy. So obviously it's based on Superman, but everyone knows it's Clark Kent just being a suspiciously swole, handsome, Mr. Sawaro looking journalist. Team Rocket pull off better secret identities than him. I mean, come on, Clark. At least get a pair of fake tits on ya. Palafin can't be a Superman. The shift is too much. This is like 2004 Josh Peck locking themselves into a cubicle for three minutes and walking out as 2003 Ronnie Coleman. 
if the pseudo legend couldn't for some reason be Tinkerton, give me one good reason why the Rice Dragon shouldn't be one of the main players. I don't care that it's meant to be physically weak. I don't care it's already in the tag team division with Don Dozo. Why not make him 600 base stat as well? Actual legendaries come as a package deal. I see no reason why the Fugazi legendaries couldn't do that either. Tatsugiri is meant to be the brains of the operation. The manager of Don Dozo cuts the promos. So even though it's meant to be physically weaker, break down them barriers. For a 600 base stat non-legend, you don't have to be a regime defeating UFO, a Cerberus demon, or even a chubby male delivery dragon. This little bit of sushi can be the top Don of the region. Hey, uh, my boss, Steve, what, whatever happened to that talking cat? You know, you know, the one who conned you out of that shit when a slowpoke tails. Who, Meowth? He's sleeping with the fishes now. Slumber party down Don Dozo's place. Yeah, the Don invited him over to discuss business, play for the Smash Brothers, and watch Norbit. You know, the Don, the Don loves the water slide scene. He can't get enough of it. Towing the turkey ass? Forget about it. Mabustif may be the boss, but he would still answer to the Don. Don Dozo's the one who would be served the flat, flavorless Manhattan, handing out the kisses of death. How could you not love him, though? The guy's name near enough translates to Lord Bozo. And King of the Bozo, strapped with a rock. Rocky Helmet solos the whole region, but he would never go solo because we already know he's got his little buddy by his side or in his mouth. Got that combo with Tatsugiri. The brain is too smooth. It needs a good manager. Finally, the Pokemon tag team division getting a nice pair who aren't complete jabronis. Brown Horizontal Quagsire is an all-timer. Quagsire was always a good lad, a belly as slappable as its head. But I didn't think a muddy, prone Quagsire would be this much of a game changer for it. I don't think any of us thought you could ever manage to improve such a sound boy this much. Fue Coco, Crocolore, Skeledurge, the lot of them. They can all get it. Top ratings, that is. The top trio of Paldea's starters. The top trio of that whole country. No dispute. Not listening to it. Oh, sweet Jesus. He's coming. The electric frog belly bolt. I feel the need to specify frog because that's a terrifying amount of mass to be hopping its way so easily towards you. But nothing to fear. Belly Bolt is just fun sized. A whole tub of fun for the whole family. This thing uses belly drum and could headline Glastonbury without having to rig up the speakers. You can't help but stare at its hypnotic gyrations. All that up. Just can't help but have yourself a little peek. You give that flubber a slap. It doesn't just fly around for a second. That's a nurse cancel my one o'clock. Boy, he got more belly than a red to Dunsparce. And Tadbulb is a banger pre-evolved form in its own right. Generation defining evolution line right here. Because I find it interesting how they've, I guess, synergized the two designs. Because most people would look at Belly Bolt and think its eyes are those 90s mouse trackballs it's got mounted on him. When actually, he's still the same jolly character he was as our wee light bulb. It's just got a nice pair of exposed organs on him now. Tadbulb can store enough electricity to power cities. If only the energy crisis could be solved by the movements of a four foot tall, 250 pound frog shaped man. One England game was set for life. Number one. Worm. Everyone's partner has the, has the whole meme like, would you still love me if I were a worm? I tell my girlfriend, look, if you were an earthworm, I'd love you more. How could you not serve up top ratings for this thing? It's so lovable. Digests natural disasters while asking you for seconds. He'd probably ask you all polite as well. He'd sound like Rex from Toy Story. Down Berserker's pub, local dog. The mascot of the local drinkers there has his own bowl with its name on it in the beer garden laid out for him. No owner ever in sight. Just spawns in the bar and lifts up the mood of everyone there. Just imagine how elite of a guard dog this would be. Knows how to handle those dodgy sorts that come in the pub after a long week of laboring just looking for beef to kick off fights for no reason. But they don't even know Orthworm is scranning on earthquakes if he wanted to. They don't even know this thing could absorb their entire trade. Your whole bricklaying career consumed by a jolly earthworm. <laughs>